In the Vinci photo, when you apply a brush stroke, the brush is made up of separate items. You just can't see them. But what you can do is you can go to the brushes panel and you can double click and you can find the brush panel in the window menu. You're now in the editor. And what you can do, you can change the brush. You can see I've got the paintbrush tool over here selected. You have to press B on the keyboard to get that. With that, you can then change the size, but you can also change the spacing. And as you do that, you can see this lovely smooth brush, like this, is actually made up of dots. So just let's go to spacing again and put it to about 70. So 70 now, if I press B, which currently is the paintbrush tool, you can see now it's not so smooth. Also, if you go here, change the spacing, you can see now it definitely is made up of dots. And you can see now, as I apply that, it's made up of, I say, these slightly rectangular dots. And all the other brushes are very similar. And you can explore all kinds of options with all of these brushes. You don't have to just use the brush that you've got. What you can also do is you can change different settings as well. Just go here to Dynamics. And you can go down here to Hue Jitter. Now the preview doesn't see any change. However, if I just go over here now and just apply it again, you can see this time you've now got this lovely colourful design where you've got lots of different dots. I'm using red or green, doesn't matter particularly the colour, as long as it's a colour, and you will see you get these colours. If it's black, you'll just get black dots. But if you've got any colours here, then you will get colourful dots like that. And also you can modify the saturation jitter as well, as well as luminosity. And you can create, again, slightly different designs there. Maybe bring in some whites and some blacks in the design. You can also modify the scatter. So you can just spread it out. You can also go here to down here. You've got random. It doesn't have to be random. You can go down and you can go for, say, cyclic. And you can change it so the colours will change in a slightly different way from the default. So you do that. Or well, let's just put it back to saturation to back to zero and you can just apply it like that and you will see now instead of the just random colors you're getting this flow of blue and then apply it. you get some reds then into oranges and then into yellows and then into greens and so on it's a cyclic brush stroke so you can create some really interesting designs using that what you can also do is you can go down here and you can save the current so i've got this design this brush. Now I could have duplicated it beforehand, but what you can do is you can go here, save as, right down the bottom, just click here and it will save and it will put copy there. So copy, you could of course call it maybe one, you might want to create variations of that, so just call it one and click OK. Now you can go here and reset, you'd think, but you can't unfortunately. The weird thing about this is it doesn't seem to do it in the way that you think it would do it. Very odd feature. You think that it doesn't matter. All these changes should just go back. Because it's not saved. It should be save as. So there is a slight, I think, oddity in the way that they've done this. Now, close it. And I'm just going to remove these. So let's just move those. You can always go back, of course. Double click. And you can change this. You can manually change it. In most cases, if you haven't done too many changes, it's quite easy. But there's no real quick reset feature. And you can again push that back like that to zero. And you can modify the spacing and put it back to 1%, which was the default. Now, if you do any changes now, so I'm just going to quickly show you. If you change the spacing again like this, you can now reset. And it puts it back to the brush that it's already got. So you're back to the but not, unfortunately, to your default. But it does put it back to what the brush was when you entered the editor. That's the trouble with this. I think it's slightly confusing. There is unfortunately no, as far as I'm aware, any way of changing the reset into a default. I can just try various things, shift, whatever. Sometimes various controls will change that to a default. It doesn't seem to happen in this. But just be aware of that when you're changing brushes, you may end up with something you don't want. 
good way around it, which I think personally is always the best way, is I like to go say this one. I always right click and then go to duplicate. And you've created one there and you're not then editing that one, but you're editing a duplicate. It makes it a bit easier, makes it easier just so you don't lose the existing one. Because there are lots of things that actually are hard to reproduce. So if you go to texture, you'll notice in many of the brushes, many of the brushes have textures. And if you remove it, change things, you can't get back to that texture. Not easily anyway. Now, before I go any further, there is a way to reset it. What you have to do is go up to File up here. Oh no, I should say Settings. Up here, depends on the machine. Now I'm using a Mac. Also PC, it will be slightly different, but you need to go to the Settings section. Go to Settings and there, go over here and you've got General and you've got all the options all the way down here. And go down to Miscellaneous and you've got that. Reset Brushes. So just click it. So Reset Brushes and it will ask you, Yes, yes, I want to actually reset it. So yes, okay, it's done it, close. And now if you go back to your inks, you'll notice you've got your old brush back again. It's a bit drastic because you will lose all the brushes you've got. So you might have hundreds of brushes you've created, you will lose them all. But a good solution around that is always simply to use the export command. But it's a bit of a brutal way of doing it. Personally, I wish there was a reset brushes feature but it just reset the brushes that are the ones that it came with, but left your actual new ones there as well. But it doesn't do that. So let's just go back to this, this one. Double click, and I'm just going to change it. So I've got here general. Again, I can change the spacing. Do all those dynamics. But also what you can do, because unfortunately there's no stretch feature. So if you want to extend and stretch the thing, maybe upwards, vertically. So you've got, you've got this just rectangular design, which is not ideal. But what you can do is you can go to texture. And you can see this nozzle. That's what it's made up of. You can see the design there. As you go around there. And, of course, you can reset if you want to get back to it. But what you can also do is you can add. To add here, slightly confusing, I think, personally, the way they've combined the two. I think they should have had it on multiple tabs, but they haven't. And you can then select that file. But unfortunately, you can only select one at a time, which is a pity. I've created these earlier. They're just very basic brush designs. They're just a long line of a brush stroke, an ink pen. So open, and you can see that it's added there. Because the brush is not an image brush, or a selected brush, this type of brush, it will only be grayscale. So you could have a colorful design, doesn't matter. With this, you've got to just accept it's gonna be black. I don't know why they did it this way, but they have. And again, add two, you can see it's a blue design, but it doesn't matter. And again, add three dot PNG. So if you actually create designs, a good thing to do is when you create it, if you're going to use this approach, is to create maybe some things that are slightly variations on this side. Maybe, obviously, on a grey scale. So you make something that's very dark, something that's very light, something that's maybe broken up. But if you go for colour, it doesn't make any difference. You can see the colour's totally lost. And now you can see you've got a completely different brush. Now, what you can do, press B to get the paintbrush tool. There, B on the keyboard. Very key thing to remember. Doesn't always do it. If you press B, sometimes it does seem to ignore you. But also I find it very hard sometimes with an art pad and pen, which I'm using, to actually select the paintbrush tool. It does seem to make it very awkward to select it. But let's apply it. And now you can see as you apply it, you get this, this effect. So you get a break in that. Now, if you go back here to general, you can change the spacing. And this time you get like that. You can see you get these thin lines. So let's just apply it now. You can see now you get that. So you can create some very odd designs just by changing this. I'm just increasing the size a bit so you can see it. So let's just apply it again. Or if I go for, say, red, and you can see now I get that effect. But it's broken up. But what you can also do with these textures, you can remove this. So you might decide, you know what, you don't want that one, the big blob there. Or you might want different blobs in there. You can select it and you can remove it. 
as I say, without saving the old brush, it's very hard to bring it back unless you reset all the brushes. So you've got this. And then you can go here instead of random, you can use cyclic. And you can see then you get this effect where it's got sort of this one, and then you've got this one, and then you've got another one. So you can sort of go through it, and let's just apply it again. You can see now as you apply it, it does change slightly as it goes into a new type of brush, and then maybe into another brush, and so on. You can see you get a lovely flowing line like that. And you can also, if you want, go to general here, change the spacing again, change the rotation. So you can go like that to create different designs, but you can see you've got this flowing brush like that and I can push it all the way to there to create a sort of very intense sort of line brush design so let's just apply it like that and you can of course apply it very rapidly like that but also we can do go here dynamics you can still change hue and jitter let's just apply it again and you'll see that now you get those lines but now you've got all these colors but also you can change hue and jitter all the way up there, and you can go to cyclic, exactly the same as the other one. Cyclic means you can now just go through this, and now you get this lovely rainbow effect. So let's just remove that again. Let's, once you get too much of there, it makes it very hard to see. So let's just go back to the paintbrush tool, and now apply it again. You can see now you get this lovely rainbow effect made up of all these lines. And again, you can still push the space a little bit more. And let's just push that down, and now, you can see you get this lovely flowing sort of gradient brush stroke, very rapid or ribbon or a festive design, I would think of that. But also what you can do, go to dynamics, you can change the rotation just at the moment, 100% there, but it's set to none. I always think that's slightly confusing to be honest when you've got 100% and then of course it's got none there. What you need to do is put it random and then you'll get sort of like a scattering design, sort of furry, random color design like that and also of course you can modify the channel let's just increase the size so you can see it a bit better and you can see then you get this lovely sort of furry sort of i say lovely festive design very quickly created that way and it's great for like background designs carpet designs who knows whole range of different designs you could use with this with and of course you can always apply effects with them as well don't have to just keep it like you know this you can always go to filters apply all kinds of effects but i'm not going to do that here and exactly the same as before you can go to dynamics and rotation instead of that you can always go to cyclic and you can see then you get this sort of lovely effect and all kinds of different shapes and designs can be created by simply going here just clicking this profile and quite often i go with the second one there but you can just try the other ones and you can see as you do that, you'll get this sort of design. And again, let's just remove these because it's easier just to quickly show you with an emptier there. And you can see then as you apply your brush, you get this lovely twirly effect as it goes around, sort of twists and turns as you go across with the, now I'm using like say an art pad, but it's exactly the same if I go to my mouse, it's exactly the same sort of design using the mouse. And you can feel very rapidly the entire image with this very psychedelic sort of color effect. But also what you can do, go here, you've got options for changing maybe the blend mode. Also you've got here, set wet edges on. Now I'm not keen on the wet edges, quite often I like to turn that off, so just go up here and turn it off, and often just set wet edges off. The reason being is that you can always see through it, and sometimes I just prefer the more solid brush stroke. I think everyone will have their own favorite way of looking at this, of course. And again, you can change the size and apply it again. And you've got other settings as well. The textures, you can manipulate these. So again, you can change this, maybe go for the ones. And as you can see, as you change that, or change with the standard profile, it will add in more or less of different brushes. And I've gone for fairly similar brushes. But you could, of course, go for a diagonal brush, maybe a zigzag brush, combine lots of different things, maybe broken sort of brush strokes, different lines, you know, dashes all the way through it, those sort of things you could do. And also, you can always bring in some texture. I haven't even explored the texture aspect of this. And you can, of course, go with nozzle there, scale, once you've got some texture, etc., to do that. And you can create a whole range. And there's also even more sub brushes you can bring into it as well. Close, 
And now with that, you can also use it with symmetry. So symmetry, just simply go here with the brush tool. And now you've got this brush. Hopefully, click into it, it will remember it. Personally, I think once you've got this, I think a good idea if you want to save it, make certain you have got it. If you've got, if you create a really amazing brush, what you need to do is export the brushes. Because I have found sometimes, for some weird reason, Finzi Photo loses some of the settings. Not everything, but it does seem to have a tendency to suddenly forget, you know, various randomness or just the settings. Not certain why. If that's a bug, I don't know. But you can do, go up here with symmetry. And I'm just going to go here and just set it to, say, four. And lock. Always prefer to lock it, just so it doesn't move. Because it's quite easy to just go over in the centre and just move it by accident. And you can see then, you can just apply this very rapidly to create all kinds of beautiful sort of lines all going down to the central design. So you can create some beautiful tile designs very quickly. But also what you can do is it's on a layer. For this brush stroke, you can always go to layer, a new layer. And I'm just going to quickly show you. Just apply it a bit like that. Once you've got that, you can always go to layers. You've got this design here. You can see there in the thumbnail. You can always go to effects, click there, and go to 3D. So 3D, turn that on. And extend that so you can see it even more. Maybe change the profile. So you can go through the profiles there, create a design like that. Just simply select different there. Maybe that one, that one, that one. You can see you can create a variety of different designs using this, as well as some outer shadow. And apply that and set that. And click close. And now, if you apply some more brush strokes, every brush stroke you apply will have that see 3D effect applied to it. So you can create some truly odd designs very quickly using that brush stroke and there. And you can fill the whole design in or not fill the whole design in. But you've got this lovely tile effect with a 3D thrown in as well. But again, all these things can be done with all the other brushes. So if you want, simply just go here, maybe go to dry media. So in dry media, you can see you've got this brush here, round chalk. And again, always double click. And I would suggest maybe you can save it before you make any changes. Probably a good idea, unless you duplicate it, but you can always save it and then just save it to one. Click OK. Maybe close. And just to make certain you're working only with this. So double click, definitely working with just that. And you can change the size and change again, dynamics, size data, etc. And you can see this one, if you go click here, you've actually got a texture, which is one reason definitely if you change things, tweak things on the brush, if you do this and remove or add a different texture, say, then you'll find that it's harder to go back unless you reset all the brushes. But you can see here you've got nozzles up here. And again, you can do exactly the same as before. You can quickly add, you can add the ones existing. And all you need to do, if you want to do that, let's just remove all these. Just go like that. Simply go to the brush tool here and you can use this brush to create the design. And let's just... Get rid of symmetry, I don't want that anymore. And you can apply a brush stroke like that. And again, it doesn't matter it's red. You might like to go here and set it to grey. Just go to the greys. And you can see that you've got all the greys. And then, let's just undo that brush now. And you can apply grey like that. Maybe go over here, click there. Create another design there. And just go up here, maybe make it slightly darker. And you've got that design, something like that. Then go to, make sure it's selected there, go to File and Export. And you've got your design, make certain you use Selection Area, that's the key thing, Selection Area, so you haven't don't got all the rest of the design. And you can then click and export. Now you can, of course, change the size, maybe go for a bigger document, maybe make it a thousand by a thousand, or extend it using that size setting. I think it's probably best not to do it that way. But maybe just call that A. Let's just go through there and save it. And of course, you can manipulate this. So filters, let's just go for distort and deform. So just create something slightly unusual. And just, just drag that like this. 
drag it that way. And you can see you can break, create all kinds of different brush designs like that. And something like that. So with that, click apply and export that. And you've got that as a great potential for a brush as well. So you've got a design there, export, and again, B. So now what you do, go back to your brush, just over here, make sure you use this brush that you've just created. Don't go with the other one. So double click. And now in here, instead of these ones, you can always go to add and say A.png. Got that, click add and go for B. And you can always remove these. So you can turn around and say, I don't want that one. I can remove it, click there and remove. And you've then got quite a different brush stroke design. And again, you've got interpolation. You've also got random, but you can also go for cycling. And you can then click here and you can see then as you change that, it will quite radically change the brush. So these profiles can be used to create all kinds of unique sort of like brush like that, where it's got a real sort of edge to it, a very unusual design and just drag that down. You can see as you do that, it will change the brush. And again, exactly the same for rotation jitter. You can see as you do that. Also, hue jitter, just change that. Again, cycling, do exact same. Click here, go for standard profile, close, and now apply the brush stroke. And you can see then you got a very different, now because it's in black, you can see what happens. It ends up being obviously black, Huge as it doesn't work with that. So just go with green and now apply the brush stroke again. And you've got that. And you can see now colors come into it. So you get a lovely sort of weird color effect like that. Now it's obviously predominantly green, but you can always double click and just change this profile. Click there. You might find that if you go say like there and close and now apply it again. Now you get some blues and little less green than before. And you can see quite a variety of quite unusual brush strokes very quickly like that. And again, you can tweak all the other settings. So double click, change rotation jitter, random, cyclic, and so on. Click close and again, apply that. So you've got some unique brushes from a very basic set of brushes over here. Now, Affinity Photo does come with a decent selection of brushes, acrylics, basic, dry media, but I think it's really good and very easy to change the brushes that you've got. But the key thing is to make certain you always duplicate it. And also, again, I would say just go up here, right side this menu, and export the brushes to make certain if you've got something you've created that you're really happy with, it's a real good idea, I think, to save it because you might find that when you go back to it next, it's gone. And it's just a pity that sometimes that happens. Don't know why it does. And of course now, once you've got your design, you can also just go to filters, distort, and maybe mirror, and just use this to create all kinds of unique designs very quickly as well. And click apply. Well, I hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike is always great. And are you using these brushes? Do you find changing brushes in Affinity Photo reasonably easy, reasonably understandable? The way it resets and the save as, I think slightly confusing. Personally, I find that really awkward. I think they could have done a slightly better way of doing that to make it easier. But also I think that what would be great would be a brush creator feature. You've got the brush editor, but I think a more sort of better range of features to be able to manipulate this would be even greater. Unfortunately, what you've got is because you can just double click, you've got this preview, but I don't think it's the easiest space. At least you've got the option when you've got the brush tool selected to actually use the brushes here. That is one really good thing. Many applications don't have that feature where you can't sort of go onto the actual document and apply it. But also one thing that would be nice would be a scratch board feature because this is not really a scratch board because you have to keep deselecting and going to the move tool, removing it and apply it again. So it would be nice to have more of a sort of scratch board where you can just try things out, let's say manipulate things and also some randomized features, randomization features here as well. Also, I would love to see more options in the cyclic. Don't know why they've just gone with one cyclic because when you apply things, 
it applies in one direction. It'd be nice if there was an anti-cyclic. Even for sizing and all those things, there should be the opposite as well. Don't know why they left that off. Also, why there's no spacing as well. Option here in the jitter. I would love to see that. Anyway, 